Hello and welcome to section 6 data provisioning. In this topic we are going to talk about what is data provisioning and the different types of data provisioning. Throughout this section we will implement the different types of data provisioning for the COPA scenario. Let's start with what is data provisioning. Data provisioning is the act of getting data or being able to access data from a source system to a target system without the interference of the data warehouse. That is the technical terminology for data provisioning. In common language, you would say that to be able to bring data from the source system to the target system without the interference of the enterprise data warehouse. Now broadly, they are categorized into real-time provisioning, near real-time data provisioning, data federation and local data import. So first let's take a look at real-time data provisioning. In, in the HANA solution, we have two tools which allows you to get data in real-time. So it's not a part of the native HANA solution, we have to use one of these tools to be able to get data in real-time. So the first tool is SAP SLT, SLT stands for SAP Landscape Transformation and next tool is Sybase Replication Server. Both of these tools are replication tools that means they copy the data from the source system and they paste it or post it on the target system with a latency of less than 5 seconds. So in other words, you're looking at real-time data when you have implemented these tools in between your source system and your target system. We will talk in detail about SAP SLT and Sybase Application Server in the coming topics. The next is near real-time data provisioning. When we say near real-time data provisioning, this means we don't have access to data in real-time because SAP BODS is an ETL tool. This is the tool which we use to bring in a strong transformational layer between the source and target. Now because BODS is an ETL tool, it allows you to work on the metadata and work on the data itself before pushing it to the HANA target. So you have a staging area per se which you can work on before pushing the data into the HANA target. BODS has many other benefits. One of them is being able to bring in a transformation layer. Second is it talks to many more databases and then compared to your replication tools and it talks to format data for example XML and JSON and things like that and it also helps you to talk to unstructured data for example if you have a Hadoop data source you can talk to Hadoop using SAP HANA BODS excuse me SAP BODS so it, this has its own benefit and naturally it has its uh, drawback which is not being able to provision data in real time which is which works just fine in some use cases because you can run this tool every 10 minutes. So practically speaking, you won't be able to do that, but again, you will be getting close enough to satisfy many use cases. Next concept is data federation. Data federation means we actually don't bring the data inside the database or inside the target. We keep the data where it is, but we only import the metadata from the source system into the target system and we create virtual data tables for those tables. And then you can go on to build models on top of this and you can also provision this to the application layer or the reporting layer. This is achieved by installing drivers on the HANA box and being able to communicate to all these source systems, for example, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Hadoop, Sybase IQ, and other HANA systems as well. Out of the box, the HANA provides certain drivers to talk to most of these sources. So you can right away get out up to speed by using data federation. So just once again to clarify, data federation is the capability to keep data where it is in the source system, but to be able to bring the metadata to the target system and to be able to model and to be able to provision that to the reporting layer. So for example, if somebody runs a query, so query comes inside because as far as the query is concerned, the data is sitting inside HANA. So when it comes inside, then the, the query engine realizes, hey, data is sitting elsewhere. 
and then that part of the query goes to the actual source system and then they pick up the data from there bring it back and the collation and all the other activities is done in the HANA. So there are many ways to do how you exactly want to split the queries and things like that. We will see more about that in the coming topics. Next is local data import. So naturally you many many of the business users still use CSV and flat files. So naturally you need the capability to do that. So internally HANA has a local import which allows you to bring CSV and flat files. So SAP DXC it is designed specifically to interact with the extractors of the SAP ERP system. Now when you want to bring that data into the HANA database then you would use the SAP DXC. DXC also provides other solutions. We will see that when we were talking about DXC. That's in a snapshot what is data provisioning and the different data provisioning types. We will talk about each of these tools in detail when we go to those topics.